when you're stressed, we tend to all focus on the negative, the negative, the negative, because that is stress. That is the fight and flight. That is the key thing keeping us alive. But you know, we don't need to necessarily worry about keeping ourselves alive anymore. So we need to be able to handle where we are on that continuum between fight and flight and rest and digest. Alphas, welcome back to the show. My name is Andy Naylor, CEO and founder of Naylor Body Design and host of your Optimal Alpha podcast. Welcome back to the show. Hope everyone is good. You can't avoid stress. That's that. We, we know that. We can't avoid stress and it is positive. It's when it becomes chronic that it's an issue. So you can't, what we want to do is stop it from becoming overwhelming. Stop it from becoming chronic and ongoing. So we need to practice some some daily strategies. So let's say stress is overwhelming. Let's say it is chronic. What can we do to relieve stress at the time while we are stressed? So exercise. Exercise, when you feel the symptoms of stress coming on, um, will certainly help. Even a short walk can boost someone's mood. But generally speaking, we would all know that um, you know, uh, exercise releases what we call endorphins. Endorphins tend, tend to make us feel pretty good. Um, I do not have the literature. I'm now thinking about it while I'm talking. I should have gone and found it. I would go. I will go out on a limb and say that I bet if I went and looked for it. Well, if you go if you go and look for anything you want to look for, you'll find it. There's a name for that. But if I went and looked for it, I'm sure that there is there is great technical literature out there with really good studies that will show that in terms of improving mood, sense of self, well-being, reducing stress, anxiety, exercise is probably at the top of the list. It's at what, what whatever modality do we have that is as strong um, in changing these things as exercise. And the exercise could be, it could be playing tennis. It doesn't matter what the thing is. It's movement. It's focusing on something else other than the, the, the stress. It's getting the body moving and doing what it's supposed to do. Okay. So exercise is always going to be top of that list. Um, at the end of each day, take a moment to think about what you accomplished, not what you didn't get done. There's, there, there's always, always going to be more things that you didn't get done than you did. Of, of course, right? That, that, there's always going to be a gazillion more things that you could have done. So don't focus on the things you didn't do. Get to the end of the day and focus on the things you accomplished. Okay? That then leads into one of the best things you can do at the end of the day is, um, is gratitude, which is kind of nearly journaling. Um, so some of the things that can help us most in these areas always sound a little woo-woo, right? A little out there, a little, a little too simple to be useful. But they, um, well, I, I had a client who I told to go away and do gratitude. And I'm not going to say who it was. It was a guy. Um, and he, I, I said to him in his check-in, um, actually, the week later, hey, now, how was your gratitude? And he said, uh, he wrote it down. He did exactly what I'm about to tell you to do. He wrote it down. He did what, I was, you know, what I'm about to tell you to do. And he, he became extremely emotional. He said it hit him like a truck in a really positive way. Because obviously, I don't know what he wrote. He didn't tell me, he didn't ask to know. But ultimately, get to the end of the day and you should have a notepad next to your bed. Sit down on the edge of your bed and write down a minimum of five things that you are genuinely grateful for that day. And it really doesn't matter what they are. It could be, um, I'm grateful for the mic that I'm talking into right now. So it gives me a good, clear voice for people to listen to my podcast. Right? It's something I'm genuinely grateful for. I couldn't do this without that mic sitting up there. Right? I'm grateful for it. Now, you could go to the level, I'm grateful for something about your spouse. It could, it could be a far more emotive thing. You write five things down, okay? And then say them out loud. Just, say, just send them out there, say them out loud. Because guess what? You cannot be grateful and pissed off at the same time. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> like, it's, 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 it's really difficult. You cannot be genuinely grateful for things in your life and be pissed off. So pissed off is also, you know, you could also say then stressed. Like it, it, I'm not saying that writing five things down will reduce all the stresses in your life, but it will change your perspective a little bit. And what are we talking about here? Changing perspective. Can't change the stresses, but could we change your perspective? Yeah, I think so. In fact, I know so. So, so sitting down at the end of the day, spending a few moments writing down five things, write them down in a book, um, take it seriously. Sounds, a little, sounds too easy, doesn't it? 
but take it, take it seriously. Write them down, say them out loud, and do it continually, whatever things happened in that day. Um, but then also, I'm uh, adding into that could be some mindfulness work. Uh, this is something I tend to do in the morning. I tend to do uh, 10 to 15 minutes of mindfulness. Meditation. Basically, I use a little app that has, um, sometimes it's guided, sometimes it's just noise. It could just be the sound of rain or, or sometimes the sound of water, anything that just isn't really anything your brain can attach itself to. And I sit there, now I have a particular way of doing this now that I, I'll, I'll share this with you that I've found works really well, um, which is it, it, your goal when you're, <laughs> your, so your goal when you are practicing meditation is to basically focus on nothing but one thing, which is your breathing. So you, nothing else matters at that moment in time. Nothing, absolutely nothing. You've got 10 minutes to sit down and do nothing, but imagine the world has melted around you and it's just you, you, your soul, you, your person, not even your body, okay? Which is a bit weird, but when you kind of practice this, it does start to feel like that. You can start to feel like you begin to detach from everything in a really nice, I want to even say spiritual way to be honest. So the way in which I help my mind focus, and I have trained my mind, because I couldn't do this very well at the start, and the more I did it, the better I've got. So I have trained my mind. So technically, I sit down, I put on my little earbuds in, and I'm going to go from 10 to 15 minutes. And so I breathe in and out through my nose, and I count one. Okay, so and my mind goes one. And then I go in, out too. I'm 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 watching, focusing, and noticing the breath all the way in and all the way out. And I'm focusing on where I can feel it most. Normally at the end of your nostrils. Sometimes it could be in your belly as it moves. So you're going to notice it somewhere. It's normally one of those two places. F watch the breath the whole way in and the whole way out, and count one, then two, then three, then four, all the way to ten. So in out one, in out two, in out three, get to ten. So then in the back of your mind, you've now counted one. One round of 10, and then you go again. So in, out one, in, out two, all the way to 10. And in the back of your mind, you count two, two rounds of 10. I now get to 15 rounds of 10. To start with, I could not get to five. Legit, I couldn't get to five. My, my mind just disappeared and I'd be like, I don't even know how many rounds I've done and I don't know how far through this round I am. Now, when I get to about 15 now, that's starting to happen. What's actually happening is I'm kind of falling asleep. So I'm kind of putting myself to sleep, which is not the whole point. But I'm obviously relaxing that much. I've just had a walk and I'm kind of literally, my mind's just switching off, which is a problem because I want to keep my mind alert because we're, we're trying to train the mind here. So anyway, that's how I do my mindfulness. Why is this useful when it comes to stress? Stress is a stressor and a response. Let's, Im let's imagine you stub your toe. The stubbing of the toe is the stressor. We can't change that. You did it by accident. But you shouting and screaming and throwing your coffee across the room, that's your response. That's your stress response. That is the thing that we're trying to change. Now, what mindfulness does is it allows us to quite often create a gap mentally between the stressor and the response. I don't know how that happens. Go and ask someone who knows meditation better than me. But it's, it, it allows you to, I guess, control your mental activity and create a bit of a gap, a moment, a moment between the stressor and your response to it. And in that little blessed moment, guess what you have? A fucking decision. You can either throw the coffee across the room or you can be like, well, I'll, okay, my toe hurts but I don't need to now do a second silly thing by some sort of reaction. Think about that. Think about how that might now play a really useful role into your life. So if you've got work colleagues or, or, or someone or children running around, they do something, they do something, you couldn't have changed it, they did it. Someone else external to you did it. You can't change that, okay? That's the stressor. But your stupid ass response to it is not helping, whatever that might be. Screaming back to the kids. I don't know, you know, I don't know, firing on the spot, someone who works for you, whatever. It's not helping. You need to create a gap in your mind. M good mindfulness practice will allow you to do that. Alphas, I interrupt this show with a simple message. This show is here to benefit you and your progression to the best version of yourself. But not only just you, it's also here to benefit the people around you, your loved ones, your friends, other alphas in your vicinity. So, 
Why not do a really cool thing today? Something that I would thank you for and maybe someone else would. Share this podcast with at least one other alpha out there who you know would benefit from it. Why not share the information, share the ability for someone else to grow? I'm sure they would thank you. I 100% would absolutely thank you. This podcast only grows by our listeners, our followers doing amazing things like giving us five-star reviews, downloading podcasts, subscribing, and then of course sharing it with other people. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, share it with one person, and of course drop us a five-star review, download the podcast, and of course subscribe. And now back to the show. Uh, well, we've got set your goals for the week. Set clear goals for the week of the month. Narrowing your view onto the things that you need to focus on can certainly help, okay? I can also give you an example where widening your view will also reduce stress, interestingly. But what happens tends to be is, certainly with our workloads as, 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 as business leaders or business owners or whatever that might be, there's always a gazillion things on the to-do list. My to-do list is, it would be months long if I just sat and actually tried to do it all in one go. It's overwhelmingly long. So all I do each morning is I write, I take my list and I rewrite the, th- the five things that I need to get done that day. It will be the top priority things that I have to get done. And if I can get those done, I've done a damn good job. So when I get to the end of the day, I focus on the things that I accomplished and not the b- bloody massive list behind me that I didn't get done because I was never going to get it all done. I'm not going to stress about it. I just pick the top five things and I might get six done. I might get two done like I'm gonna go after those top five but set those goals um also if your if your stress is that bad consider heading proper help real help healthcare therapist someone who someone who can really delve into these things probably in person with you there's nothing wrong with asking for damn help like there's something wrong in struggling in silence I would suggest okay um so those are things that you could do, like, I guess, while stress is happening that can sort of be um, stress relievers. Thanks so much for hanging around. I hope it's been useful. Um, I will be back again for another one of these. And of course, look, hey, share it with someone that, you know, if there's someone out there that you think is maybe stressed. For now, I'm off. Go and have an amazing day. I'll catch you on the next episode. 